So, what am I up to this week? I'm making angels. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog, vlog number 98 for Monday, December the 17th, 2018. And I hope everybody had a good week and had a good weekend and I'm sure everybody is getting ramped up for Christmas because one week from today is Christmas Eve day. Bah humbug. Yeah, I'll be glad when it's over. So, what have I been working on? All right, so speaking of Christmas, I've been working on some more Christmas things. Now, I think I may have showed you before these embroidered angels that I do on my embroidery machine, but um, what I, I've made a whole bunch of these, and at each place setting at my Christmas dinner table, there will be this little bag with a chocolate Santa in it that comes from a chocolate um, factory store that's uh, very close to where we live. Um, it's great. Uh, little store. It's called Williams Chocolates. It's in Whitby, which is the store or store, the town next door to us. We, we're in Oshawa and um, they make their own chocolate there and it's very good. And so I've put them in these little bags. I've got this little angel attached to it and I'll put this at each place setting on the table. And it's a, a, I always like to give things to people that they can take away after they've been to my home for dinner or for some event. So this is a takeaway. So I've made those and I made these. Now these were actually in our last embroidery class, but I made one in advance and they're little, what they call pocket purses. Um, this was the first one that I, or sorry, this was the first one that I made and I thought I did a really good job because I couldn't find the exact instructions for how to make it, uh, but I did find something and uh, I did find out when I took the class and made this one that there were a few things I did not do right about this one. And I had a couple of mistakes in it. I cut my material too close to the edge, so I had some holes in the bottom and I sort of turned it inside out and sewed those up. But um, it looks good, but there are flaws in it. And, uh, but you see they have this little zipper, they open up and it's a, a little pouch for, you know, a little girl I think would like this. Um, you know, it's a little change purse kind of a thing or whatever. Now this one's a better one. I made this uh, yesterday in the, or not yesterday, but on Saturday in the class. And uh, the only thing I've got against them though is they're, they're kind of tiny. So I am going to make for my great nieces uh, a couple of pocket purses, but I'm doing them as Santa. And they're a little bigger as you can see. And they'll have their initial up here. Now, this was the first one that I made, and today I'm going to make two more, but this is fully lined inside, whereas these ones are only lined on one side. Um, they're a little bigger, um, which I think makes them a little nicer, and I'll probably put a little strap on it on this one like I did with this one. So, you know, I'd put it on their wrist or something like that, look all fancy. Um, the problem with this one, again, was I cut the material a little short because uh, you turn it inside out. And uh, so part of this, this is basically the top of his hat. It's gotten kind of tucked under. Um, so when I do them this time, I'll make sure I leave enough, leave enough material for this. Can you see his mustache? There he is. That's a little better under the light. Looked like a white blur there for a minute. You see he's got his mustache, his face, his nose, and that whole bit. So as I said, I'll leave a little bit more material. That'll puff out a little bit more and uh, you'll see the initial a little better. But I think they're kind of cute, and I think my two great nieces are going to love these. You know, they're little girls. They love little things like this. I think they do. Anyways, that's what I've been up to this week, and I have something else to show you a little bit later on that I kind of teased you with on um, Stephen and Walter Live yesterday, but I am coming to that in a minute when we get to the product review. So, What's the YouTube channel of the week? Well, it's The Sewing Room. Now, I've been trying not to do a lot of reviews on sewing channels because I know not everybody out there enjoys sewing like I do. But um, this one I've been watching for quite a while and at first I found it a little quirky and a little amateurish, 
But as I've watched them week by week, I've learned quite a bit from this lady. So I share it here with you. This week's YouTube channel is again one about sewing, uh, but a very practical sewing channel. This is called The Sewing Room and your host is Cheryl. And Cheryl gives you a lot of tips and tricks for making really quick and easy things. Right now she's been doing a lot of last minute gift uh, making projects like placemats, table runners, that kind of thing. What I find about uh, Cheryl is it's a little quirky, but um, she does give very clear instructions and shows you step by step how to do some very simple but elegant projects. She even has her husband Manny helping her out as well and he's a bit of a card even though he doesn't say anything. Um, so if you're looking for some great tips, especially for those of you that are beginner sewers, check out The Sewing Room. So the link for The Sewing Room is down below, as is Stephen and Walter Live, and uh, the book of the week. Now, Stephen and Walter Live, success. Knock wood, hope it stays this way. We didn't have any freeze up problems, and I was able to produce it at the 1080p quality that I'm used to doing it to, so the replay quality should be pretty good. Funny thing though, when we first started the video, or first started the live broadcast, and if you watch it, you'll see what I mean, um, things looked a little cloudy, like foggy. And we couldn't figure out what the problem was. We thought, well, maybe it's the lights we have overhead. Uh, we do it out of our kitchen, so the lights are uh, track lighting, basically, with LEDs in it. And, um, we adjusted the lighting, it was still a little bit foggy, and then Walter had the idea to clean the camera lens on the iPad. Not a bad idea because I never clean it. So Walter cleaned it and that cleaned things up. So today before I did this uh, video, you know how we were getting the little orbs coming through and as much as I'd like to think they were guardian angels or something like that, I think they were basically uh, dust particles floating in front of the lens and I've cleaned the lens really well the, this morning so everything should be very very clear um, from my perspective right at the moment because I can see myself as I do this it looks pretty good to me so always trying to keep things uh, high quality here all right so speaking of quality and keeping things up and stuff like that what's pissing me off this week well we already talked a little bit about this yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live. And just to recap very quickly what that was about, we discovered that at the end of November, somebody had run off with 290,000 of our points on our PC MasterCard. PC MasterCard uh, is done by a company that owns uh, a huge uh, grocery store ch chain here in Canada called Loblaws. They also own Shoppers Drug Marts, which is another huge chain of drugstores. Um, and they have point system. And I use that card a lot for the points because they add up pretty good, pretty quickly. And then you can use, apply those points to food when you go into their grocery stores. So I've been saving these up for this past year. I kept telling Walter, he kept wanting me to cash them in every time we went grocery shopping, and I'd say, no, 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 I'm saving them up for something special, and something special was Christmas dinner. I figured I could probably buy everything I needed for Christmas dinner for possibly 12 of us with just the points alone, um, and that was my plan, until we discovered that 290,000 points had been already redeemed, not by us. Now, 290 points represents $290 of, <coughs> excuse me, um, of food, basically. So I phoned the company, their line, you know, about all of this. And of course, after I went through multiple, you know, press one, if you're alive, press two, if you're dead, press three, if you want to talk to somebody or not talk to somebody, you know, it goes on and on in their sub menus. I finally got a human being told the human being what my problem was, said these points have been redeemed on November the 28th. They were redeemed at a Loblaws grocery store in a town called Markham. Markham is north of Toronto. It's 45 to minutes to an hour away from us. I don't grocery shop in Markham. I very ever rarely go to Markham. I have no 
need to go to Markham. And uh, what could they do for me? So she very politely said, yes, okay, she saw that. And after I had to answer a whole bunch of security questions again, because this company has gotten on this big bang, big, big band wagon for security because they've been breached several times over the years. That's a story all on its own. And um, so anyway, she said she would submit this in and I should expect in a day or two uh, an email from somebody from PC MasterCard. Never got one. Two days later, I went online and I found there was a place where you could register a complaint. So I did. I told them the whole story and I even threatened to say that, okay, I'm going to put this on social media. I want something done about them. I want my points. They're my points. I save them. I want them. So uh, I did get a reply back from that though with now I have a case number. So I'm going to give it a couple of more days and if I don't hear anything by say Wednesday, I'm going to contact them again. Now I have this case number. Maybe I can get something done a little quicker. Maybe. But what's pissing me off is the fact that this company or any points company they all have security systems in place and yet it's really easy to redeem your points at least on this card because you, when you walk into a grocery store they'll often ask you do you want to use your points and if you say yes all you do is you just tap your credit card on the on the credit card terminal and bang away they go i don't have to put in a pin number i don't have to um i don't have to you know identify myself and so anybody can do this now the other thing when I called them was they said that you see they combine two points programs together shoppers drug mart had their own Loblaws has their own when Loblaws took over shoppers drug mart they merged the two together but in the process of merging them together they've had a lot of problems I mean I'm not the first person this has happened to and who knows what other problems they've had it's just basically really bad administration and computer programming on their part. There's no two ways about it. Um, so um, when they did this, everything I think got screwed up, but they, they want it to be really secure. Um, so they, we had to jump through flaming hoops to upgrade our passwords and everything else for this company. So I did all of that and, uh, and yet I still lost my points. Um, on top of that, when I was talking to the person on the phone, they told me that my PC, PC Optimum card had been reported as lost. Now this is the other card. Now there's two cards as well. You can use either card. You can use your PC MasterCard if you have that, or you can use just PC Optimum card if you have that. I have both because it's two different companies at the time. Um, they sent me a new one new PC Optimum after they were doing all this security stuff and uh, some time ago and I said to her no I have never reported it lost because it isn't lost because right now I'm looking at it it's physically in my hand oh well enough said about that I guess so anyways the big th the big thing that's pissing me off is these companies offer you these points and believe me, they make it more difficult all the time for you to redeem them for anything of value. Um, one week, you know, something might cost you 3,000 points. You go on it a week later, they've upped it to 5,000 points. This is how they get you uh, with this. They're like insurance companies. They don't want to pay out. They really don't. They just want to get you in their store. And yes, it works. There's no two ways about it. It's clever um, marketing. But I want my points. So... I'll be fighting this for a while. Now, what also pissed me off was, all right, so somebody cashed in $290 worth of points at a food store, at a Loblaws, somewhere else. I hope that those people who did that, I hope they needed that. I hope that that money went towards something special for them, a Christmas dinner that otherwise they might not be able to afford. I hope so. My suspicion is, however, that it's an inside job. Because of the way, like it says on my on my statement that my points have been cashed in from my phone. I do have their app. You know, you know, the app has the barcode or something for your card and you can just hold that up to a scanner or whatever. But I've never, ever used it. Never, ever used it. Nobody has access to it. 
So that's also part of the mystery, which makes me think that they have a few crooked people working for them. Now, here's something, might sound a little racist. How many times do I say that on vlogs? I've said that a lot. Anyways, so be it. They outsource, and they outsource to places like India, Nigeria, things like that. So heaven only knows. It's one of those people from, one, uh, from a third world country or whatever, um, you know, working conditions in those countries are not the best. They're not the standards we're used to here in North America and that kind of thing. And people are desperate. When people are desperate, they'll do desperate things. Okay. Really not making a, uh, an excuse for them. I'm just saying that that could be the cause. And so they st steal things. You want an example? How many times have you gotten a phone call to have your ducks cleaned or some other thing and you can barely understand the person on the other end of the line because of that heavy accent? Because they're not calling you from some place within Canada or the United States. They're calling you from Nigeria or India. Okay? So, you know, I think it's an inside job. And heaven only knows how many other people have uh, been victims as well. So, I wait. We'll see what comes up with the company. I am going to get my points back. I am determined they're not going to get away with this. Uh-uh. And, I mean, worst case scenario, I'm going to cut up the card and send it back to them. I don't really need it. And that's the other thing, too. If I had been somebody on welfare and I had been saving up my points for a year or so because I want to give my family a really special Christmas dinner, right, and then this had happened to me, well, that would be horrible. I can afford to buy my Christmas dinner without my points, okay? But the point is about the points, point, 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 is I trusted them and I did things in good faith and whatnot and no fault of mine but definitely the fault of the company for whatever reason um, I don't have my points but I'm going to get them back as I keep saying that I am going to get them back okay enough about that just watch your points check regularly if you're one of those kind of people that you know you save points and I think everybody does anymore um, check your statement regularly so you don't don't become a victim okay so new product all right yesterday I showed you this this little place Maddie thing okay this I was just goofing around and it's like I, I wasn't that concerned about sewing it very straight and things like that at the time they did it but what I wanted to try out you see these circles and you see they're done with decorative stitches and the whole bit around the butterflies are done with the embroidery machine but the rest of this is not done with the embroidery machine as such. It's done with decorative stitches from my sewing machine. But how did I get them in such perfect circles? Well, this is what I'm going to show you. It's called the Circular Sewing Attachment. And it's by Janome because that's what my sewing machine is. There may be other ones similar to this for other sewing machines. I don't know. But I saw Kim on the Quilter's Way, a Chatterbox Quilts. I've mentioned Kim before. Um, demonstrate how to use this. In fact, she's been uh, referenced in uh, Janome's latest catalog as well uh, about this tool. This is cool. This put You set this on your sewing machine. It drops into your bobbin case. There's a little screw to down here in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. Um, just attaches to the bed of your sewing machine. And this black thing is a sharp needle underneath it. So you put your material on top of that, figure out your the radius of your circle, and automatically it, you set your decorative stitch, whatever one you want, and away it goes. You don't even have to touch it because the feed dogs pull the material through. And because it's mounted on this little uh, needle thing here, it goes around in a circle. So it's really a cool tool, and that's how I did all of these circles. So there's a lot of potential here for doing some really cool things. Now, I just, this top part, I was just playing with it um, to see how it worked. And I thought, well, it's kind of pretty. Didn't want to throw it out. So I embroidered the two butterflies on it. And then I put some batting in it, put a back on it, just simple. I didn't do any quilting, stitched it up. And now I think I'm going to use it on my everyday kitchen table um, as a hot mat. So. Don't ever throw out anything. Everything's got to choose. So anyways, I'm really loving this. I'm thinking of doing a uh, Idiot Quilters 
video in more detail about this, showing how you attach it and how, how it works. Um, I may get that out later this week. And uh, not a cheap toy, okay? I looked them up on Amazon first, and they were they started at about $101 and went up from there depending on who the seller was. So I thought, well, contact my sewing store, Ultimate Sewing. Yes, they had them in stock, and the price was $80. So that was a lot better, plus I get 10% off uh, in there. So, you know, yes, it is expensive, but I think it's going to be... Um, a lot of fun to use and just opens up all kinds of possibilities with your decorative stitches on your machine. So that was my product of the week. So what's next? Let's talk about the book of the week. I don't know if I've ever talked about this before. I may have um, some time ago, but it's probably worth repeating anyways. Um, I, I keep a list of what I talk about in, and I check it every week before I pick something else just to make sure I'm not duplicating and this wasn't in my list so I'm not sure or I may have actually done uh, some time ago a craft video about this book either way it's a good book surface treatments uh, surface treatment workbook okay this is great for anybody who likes to do backgrounds for mixed media for scrapbooking pages for card making um, it's filled with ideas and techniques. It's got great pictures um, of different things you can do, good instructions, the whole bit. It's an excellent book and you can see I've earmarked several pages. Let's just pick one at random and see what it was I was earmarking because it's been a while since I've looked at this book. Um, crackle paste talks about uses of crackle paste. Um, now, this is also great for someone just getting into mixed media because there's a whole lot of products out there on the market and you probably don't know what to do with them. So you can look them up in this book and it will tell you what to do with them. And it says, explore 45 mixed media techniques. So that's pretty good. It is by Darlene Olivia McElroy and Sandra Duran Wilson. And when I bought it, it was listed at $28.99 Canadian, but according to the current price on Amazon.ca, it is a couple of dollars cheaper. It's $26.09, but you can get it used for $17.64. So really, the price has not really changed from when it was originally published by very much, even in the used book section. Um, so this tells you, or at least tells me, that this is still a fairly popular book. Um, so I highly recommend it, as I said, if you're interested in, especially if you're doing a lot of backgrounds and you want to learn some new techniques or you want to explore some new products, then that's the book to check out. And the link for it is down below. Okay, inspiration for this week. I don't really have any inspiration for this week. And the reason being is I have spent the last month pretty much focusing on Christmas uh, decor, Christmas gifts, things like that, um, principally with my sewing machine, of course. And for someone who says, bah humbug to Christmas, you would kind of wonder why I make all this stuff. Well, it's not really bah humbug Christmas as much as it's just, it's a very stressful time of the year. And I don't know, I don't want to bring anybody down. It's not that I absolutely positively hate Christmas. I just hate all the craziness that comes at this time of the year. Um, when I was younger, it was a, exci exciting. Now it's just a pain in the butt and I can't wait for it to be over. So, um, so I really have nothing to say about inspiration. I should get back into working on, you know, I, I'd like to make another journal, a hardcover journal. Um, there's a couple of other little paper projects, crafty projects I want to get to, but the call of the sewing machine is always so loud for me. So yeah, there it is. Okay, so that takes us to what's in my drawers. And since it is Christmas time and everything is shiny and bright and glittery, so what's in my drawers this week? Glitter. Hi, today in my drawers, I've got bling. 
well, actually glitter to be exact. It is the Christmas season, and at that point in time, we, we were thinking of sparkly things a lot. Um, it just seems to be very festive to have glitter on cards, on decorations, things like that. So I thought I'd go through my drawers and find a few of my um, favorite products for adding glitter uh, to a card, to a mixed media background, to a Christmas decoration. So I have a few of these laid out and I'm going to go through them one by one. So let's start with um, one that's been around for many years, very tried and true, and that is Stickles. Now if you're not familiar with Stickles, Stickles is a glitter glue. Um, now you can buy glitter glues in the dollar store, but I'll tell you this, I don't recommend them. Uh, usually you can find things in a dollar store that will work in a pinch. But any of the glitter glues that I've ever bought at a dollar store just come out as a big clump. Um, they're messy to use, they don't have a lot of glitter in them, and it's really not worth the buck. Um, Stickles, on the other hand, has been around for a long time. It's a tried and true product. Not particularly cheap. Well, not bad. It paid $3.29 for this. But a bottle of this will go a long way. And it comes in a whole host of colors. Um, I have no idea how many colors it comes in, but I know that I have a drawer full of these in various colors. So I'll show you what it looks like on this little sample card right here. This row in the middle. This is this one, the gold stickles the blue stickles and you can see there's quite a bit of stickle there now one problem with stickles is though you have to be patient with it the thicker you put it on the longer it's going to take to dry and I don't recommend using a heat gun on it because it can bubble up um, but it does a really good job and does a really good uh, coverage um, if you want just a little you just put on a little if you want a lot you put on a lot you can make droplets of color as well because it the bottles have a really fine tip to them. So if you want to make a little dot, okay, when you want to make a dot, you can't. Here we go. I just have to shake it down. There it comes. So there you go. You have a little dot of stickles. And you can go from there. Um, it does level itself out. Uh, a little better as it dries but uh, it will hold a peak too so you can see that if you can see the side of that it how much raised it is it will dry pretty much like that it may settle out a little bit but not a lot now there is another type of specialty stickle stickles stickles called distress and yes this is by Tim Holtz this is a Ranger product and I probably stickles themselves are also a Ranger product they are the only difference between distressed stickles and regular stickles is um, the selection of colors. There's not as many colors to choose from, and it's chunkier. And so you can see right here I use some gold stickles on this one, and it is a little bit chunkier. Um, but if you like that distressed look, because it comes in the distressed colors, Tim Holtz's uh, palette, um, then you may want to get into these. Now, I'm not sure if they still make distressed stickles. I'm not sure about that. I have a feeling they don't, but they might. I, as I said, I've had mine for years. Okay, so that's one way to add sparkle to a card. Another way is with something called a wink of Stella. These come in various colors, um, and they have glitter in them. Now there isn't as much glitter in these as there is in the stickles. So I used some blue and gold on here and you can see these first two there's a little bit of sparkle um, but not as much. Now it's a different kind of sparkle as well. This actually has like chunks of glitter in it. This is more a metallic kind of shine. Now this one down here I did something a little different. They do have a clear wink of Stella. And I love the clear Wink of Stella. And you see, it looks like a water brush. The reason I like the clear Wink of Stella, and I'm just going to do it here on this metallic, is that it will actually add a lot of glitter. So you can see what I'm getting out of this right now. And you see how it's changed? I hope you can see. Show it up here. See how much more of a sparkle there is 
to that. The clear wing Costella I know is very, very popular because you can add these to embellishments. You just go over it, it gives it a, a very nice sparkle. And it's subtle, more subtle than the stickles. Um, so I guess that's why they call it a wink of Stella because you just give it a light little amount. Problem is, getting these clear wink of Stellas always seem to be a bit of a problem. My local uh, scrapbooking store is always out of them. They're always pop, that's why they're so popular. So if you see these, get them. Now, another thing that you can use is called and now we're moving into products that are more art supplies iridescent medium it comes in a bottle it's a liquid and you can brush it on to things or what you can do you can if you happen to have an old water brush or an old empty wink of stella brush you can just put some in here because these are refillable uh, wink of stella does not sell refills for them but you can put other things in them because it's simply a water brush uh, water it down just a touch and you have a very economical glitter. Now you probably can't see it very well but right here at the top on this white cardstock I'll try to get the light on it. I'm not doing a good job. Pulled up a little closer. Yeah, it's hard to get this. And I did this on watercolor cardstock, and again, it depends on the surface you're putting on, but I can see the little glitter right here. It's a little bit more subtle, again, from the stickles or some of the other products, but it's very economical when you buy it in a bottle like this. And as I said, you can water it down, or you can use it full strength. And that's by Liquitex, but I think Golden makes one as well. Another art product that you can buy very readily in, ooh, it's a little gooey here. Let me grab a paper towel. I'll explain why my bottle's a little gooey in just a second. This is Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Now, Mod Podge has been around for years and it comes in various forms. It's essentially white glue that's been watered down. In this case, Sparkle Mod Podge has. Uh, the watered down glue with glitter in it. You need to stir it up a little bit because the glitter can settle out although it doesn't settle out like some products and you just brush it on and here it is here. Now this one's still drying because it will dry clear. Um, I just did this a few minutes ago so it's not completely dry but you see you can get some of the the shine that's on that. This is probably more economical than stickles because a jar of this, I don't know if I have a price tag on it. I don't. I think a jar of this is about $8.99. Um, these are $3.29 or more. It's been a long time since I bought them. So, you know, if you're going to do a lot, this might be the better way to go. And Mod Podge is a tried and true product as well. And very readily available in most craft stores. Another more... Um, specialized product again from the art store is gold mica flakes and I think it may come in silver as well now this is an artist grade product and you can see it looks like it's very textured um, so if you want something that's very chunky here it is when this dries this is actually flakes of mica and you can see the effect you have here is much heavier um, it's very hard as well. Maybe not as good on a card as on something like a mixed media background or maybe a um, Christmas decoration or something like that. The last product is one I've had for years. Um, when I first started working at my local um, scrapbooking store, I saw these in the store. And at the time, they weren't selling all that well. People didn't know what to do with them. So I decided to give them a try, and I love these. I fell in love with them. This is something by Tattered Angels. It's called Glimmer Glaze. And it says it's a fine glitter paint. And it comes out of the bottle in a fluid state. It dries fairly quickly. And this is it here, right? This is the gold that I'm showing right here. It has a great deal of sparkle. And the, the advantage of this is it has its own built-in little brush. It's like a 
nail polish brush and you just dab it on to whatever you want to add a little bit of shine to. Also it comes in a lot of different colors. Now I'm not sure if they're still making this or not. One problem with this is as when it sits on your shelf for a long time the mica that's in it will settle to the bottom. If you look here on the bottom you can see it's all gathered down, down there. But if you shake it, shake it well, you should be able to revive it. Also, it's not particularly cheap. A little bottle like this was seven dollars and that's maybe five years ago, so it's probably more than that now. Um, but I really love this product and as I said, I'm not sure if you can still get it. Sorry that if I'm showing you products you can't get anymore, but after all, this is what's in my drawers and I've got some old stuff in my drawers. Okay, so if you're looking to glitter things up this Christmas season or at any time of the year, you might want to look into some of these products. Into Stickles, Tattered Angels Glitter Glaze, Mod Podge Sparkle, Gold Mica Flakes, Iridescent Medium, Wink of Stella. So, that's what's in my drawers this week. I love glitter. But you can overdo it. Okay, so what, what events in the past week? Well, I just need a little drink here. Yes, I'm still drinking water. Um, I've been without coffee for two weeks now. This is the start of my third week. I missed my coffee. Um, but I don't miss the heartburn I've been having. And I noticed that that has decreased, if not gone completely away. Um, since I stopped drinking coffee. So I'm thinking about maybe in another week I may introduce coffee back into my system but much less of it like limit myself to a cup a day if even that or just on a weekend a little bit and just see if if my theory is that that has been causing me some um, you know heartburn. Uh, so Speaking of heartburn, speaking of what's coming up, or uh, well, we'll talk about that later, but events in the past week, uh, my mother's doing okay in the nursing home. Uh, we're going over there on tomorrow again. We go once a week now, but this week we're going twice because uh, what's coming up is on Thursday of this week, they have a big Christmas event in the evening at the nursing home. And so Walter and I and my sister and my niece are all going uh, to be with my mom for this special event and uh, you know it's Christmas time so you want to do things with family you know and it's mom's first Christmas basically where she won't be coming over to our place on Christmas Day because well we can't <laughs> it's just as simple as that we can't manage her um, you know uh, so that bothers me a little bit but on the other hand, it also gives me a little bit of a relief. It'll be nice to have Christmas dinner this year um, with people who are mobile that I don't have to wait on constantly. Um, you know, that it's a problem with my mom. If she comes to our house, well, the last few years she has, we have to get her down into the rec room. That's eight steps down from my front door. If you get her upstairs to the uh, kitchen, family room, dining room, that's four steps up. Either way you go, that's it. You can't be up and down. You know, like we might start down the rec room and everybody will come up to the dining room. Well, we don't. I set up a dining room basically in my rec room. And I started that several years ago when my father was still alive too for the same reasons because he couldn't walk either and it's just you know you're afraid when you're trying to help them down the stairs and the whole bit that they're going to slip you're you're going to slip and you're going to fall and things are going to be worse and um bathroom is a problem too okay don't like to talk about bathrooms but it is a reality my mother needs assistance and i'm not assisting okay no don't want to go there so anyway, she'll be Christmas Day in the home. Now, they keep them very well entertained uh, over there. Uh, but we'll go over on Christmas Eve as well. I bought my mom a few things. 
Um, you know, what, what do you get somebody that's in a nursing home? She's got plenty of clothes and things like that. And uh, so, and I've also, you know, I've been making things to decorate a room and taking things over to make it all very homely or homey, <laughs> slip of the tongue. Um, and so I got her a box of chocolates from that place where I was showing you the chocolate Santa's come from. But I know my sister got her a box of chocolates too. And how much chocolate does she need? Also, my mother has a real sweet tooth. And, you know, a few times I've mentioned that she's been sick. Uh, we think it, it always seemed to coincide with just after we brought her some kind of chocolate treat or something like that. She inhales those. She just, whoop, that's gone. And uh, then she gets sick. It's like a little kid that overindulges, you know. Um, but anyways, I got her a box of chocolates, just a small one. So she'll only be a little sick. Um, and she was talking about a calendar. So I got a calendar for next year and that. And I got stuff so I can hang it up for her when I'm over there. And I, I thought, but, you know, what else? Now, we don't exchange gifts. Walter and I, we don't do anything with gifts. I don't exchange gifts with my sister and her family, and we don't exchange gifts with Walter's sister and her family, anything like that. We don't do that uh, anymore, mainly because, you know, we have everything we want, and if there's something we need or want, we'll buy it, you know? So it's just a waste of money. Also, it takes the pressure off of trying to figure out what are you gonna get somebody that has everything, you know? Uh, you know that, everybody's got people like that to try and buy for. So we don't bother, but I thought it should be something for my mom, okay? So her watch, which I had bought her back several years ago, uh, went missing in the home. Now, we still don't know whether she just lost it or uh, whether one of the other patients picked it up because that does happen in nursing homes. Um, the nursing homes don't like you to have anything of real value uh, with the person, with the client, because of this kind of problem. They do their best to control that, but you know, people are, have dementia, Alzheimer's, they don't really know what they're doing. They see it, they take it, something like that. So I wasn't gonna get her a new watch, but I decided I would, but I got her a cheap watch from Walmart, $11.97. It looks nice. It's got fairly big numbers on it, so she should be able to see it okay. Um, and I figured, okay, for $11.97, if it goes missing and she wants another one, I'll get another one of those. They're basically disposable watches. Um, and I also got her some earrings. Um, my mother has a ton of jewelry, but it's in my house right now. And it's mostly costume jewelry. There's nothing much in there that's really worth a heck of a lot. There may be a couple of pieces, but again, what does she need jewelry for in the nursing home? It's just something else that someone might pick up. But she's got a pair of earrings she asked me to find and bring over to her from her um, jewelry box. And they're Christmassy ones. They're little holly leaves or something. And she's been wearing those a lot when we've been over there. So I thought, well, why not just get her another pair of, you know, little earrings that, you know, just ones that are like, I don't know if they're called studs. They're not quite studs, but you know, they're not danglies kind of a thing. Um, just, you know, it's just something pretty. And they were real expensive too. They were $7 for them. But again, it's not that I begrudge spending a lot more on something like that, but if it goes missing, what's the point? These look okay for her purposes in there. And I think it'll just make her feel, you know, a little bit more special, a little dressy uh, for the occasion. So that's why I got her. So it's not a lot, but it's something, you know. I, I do, one thing that I does bother me a little bit about Christmas, that since we don't give gifts, is the fact that my lips are really dry. Anyway, squirrel, um, is that on Christmas day, it, it, it's a little anticlimactic if you don't get something. But Mm, I get over that <laughs> real quick. It just feels a little strange, you know, uh, for that. So anyways, that's my mother. So last, last week was supposed to be my last class for the bag making class, the Sydney bag as it's called. 
Well, it got canceled because the lady who's instructing it had a family emergency, and I don't know the nature of the emergency or anything, but I hope it, I hope it turned out okay. Uh, I guess we'll hear this week because now that class has been pushed forward to this Wednesday. My bag is still in pieces. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to get finished. I'm a little worried about it. We'll see how much we get done in this because this is supposed to be the last class. Um, and then I'll have to venture out from there on my own with it. And it's pretty, I'm finding it pretty complex. Um, I think it could look really good when it's done, but question is, when will I get it done? So I was a little disappointed, but you know, things happen. Um, you know, and I just hope, as I said, that everything's worked out okay for her. She's a really nice lady. Um, had our last embroidery class. Um, and you saw what we did, the cupcakes, um, that kind of thing. Uh, that group and that embroidery class were just a fun group. I really enjoyed them. They were completely irreverent and just out for to learn something and have a good time. So um, they're not, there's not going to be another embroidery class per se, like the two that I've taken uh, in the last couple of months. Uh, but the owner, and she's also the instructor at Ultimate Sewing. She has said she might be doing uh, in the next session some pop-up classes where you come in a little for a longer time period in one day and do a much a larger project, which that could be really kind of interesting as well. Um, so I'll look for them. They'll put out. They're going to put out their new classes for the next session, um, which will start after. Christmas, well, after tail end of January kind of a thing. But I don't know how many classes I'm going to take this time because I think I overdid it a little bit this time. And also, we've got two trips planned and they would fall into that time period. So it would mean that I would probably miss some classes and I don't want to really miss any classes if I'm going to take something. So we'll just have to see how that all works in timing and, and what they're offering and that kind of thing. But we are going off to, and this is my last sec section today, um, what's coming up. You know that we have two trips planned in the new year, but we've, I've got two sewing retreats as well. First one is through my sewing guild, and it's something they call a stay-at-home sewing thing or something like that. Basically, they've rented a hall and for three days, and you know, you sew all day, you go home at night kind of a thing. So there's no hotel involved or anything like that, although they do have food with this. Um, I only signed up for two of the days because I thought, mm, I've never been to one before, you know, maybe three's pushing it, so we'll try two. Um, but then in March, there's a four-day retreat at a resort that's about an hour away from us. Um, both Walter and I are going and it's it's put on by Ultimate Sewing. Uh, this one is expensive. Uh, well, for two of us it's almost $900. But that includes three nights accommodation, you're there for four days, and it includes all your meals. And I have heard that uh, it's, it's very nice at this particular resort. So we're kind of looking forward to that. Now we have to figure out what we're going to do for four days there. I've got lots of kits and things. I don't know what Walter's going to do, but uh, he, he'll figure out something with that. I said to him, well, I got these kits. You want to try a kit? Um, I mean, he's already done, you know, a, a, the stained glass quilt. That was all applique. Like that's kind of advanced. And he's never taken a class or anything on quilt making. So he does want to take a basic level quilting class um, when it's offered, um, which I think would be a good idea. Uh, but Walter's kind of talented in this way anyway, so he can usually figure out how to do these things. So eh, I'm sure he'll find something to do on this retreat uh, for four days. It can could be a real hoot, and we're probably the only guys at it. Now, there were a couple of guys um, that were in my embroidery class and uh, those of you that were on uh, Stephen and Walter Live yesterday or see, uh, you will have seen they had popped in, Luch had popped in um, a couple of times because uh, he was watching us and they did mention the fact that they were on the waiting list as well for this uh, 
embroidery uh, retreat. So I'm hoping, you know, that they get in as well because with the four of us, this could be a real hoot. Watch out, ladies. The men are taking over. Yeah, I know. When is it that men don't take over? Yeah, 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 yeah. Moving on. Okay. Um, so what else is coming up? Well, I think I already mentioned the fact that they're having this Christmas event at the nursing home, so we don't need to talk about that. And I think that's about it for this week. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great week. Stephen and Walter live this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're doing our festive show. I don't know what that means, but it's Christmas time. So we're doing our festive show. And my next vlog will be next week on the 24th, uh, which is Christmas Eve day. But I will be doing a vlog on that day. So anyways, I hope uh, you're not going too crazy getting ready for Christmas. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.